Starting FMC preflight. Align the IRS, move the IRS switches to nav, the on DC lights will come on for 5 seconds during the self test then go off. The aligned lights will come on for about 10 minutes as the IRS goes through its alignment cycle. They'll go out when the alignment is complete. If the IRS is in the nav mode for the alignment to complete you must enter your present position to the IRS. First, ensure you have the correct database selected is active. Upon power up the CDU presents the IDENT page. If the IDENT page is not displayed when you enter the cockpit, press the init ref key, then press the prompt for index then press the prompt for IDENT. It selects the perf init page on the ground and allows you to select the index online select key 6 left. The index page allows us to jump to various pages. With the IDENT page displayed check the active date cycle located adjacent to line select key to right. If the date of your flight is not within the date cycle of line 2 right, check that your flight date is within the date cycle of line 3 right. The name of your flight within the date cycle of line 3 right, you'll need to transfer the inactive date cycle from line 3 right to line 2 right, which is the active line. To do this, Press line select 3 right and notice that the date cycle from line 3 right now appears in the scratch pad. Finally, press line select key to right and watch the data in the scratch pad move to to right. Press the execute key and the IRS alignment can complete when the align lights extinguish. When you change the active cycle, all root data is deleted. However it come in handy to clear the FMS in the event you've made some errors during your initial setup and want to start all over For the upper right corner of the IDENT page indicates there is only one page. Verify correct aircraft type on the left and engine on right. The 20K designation indicates. The aircraft is equipped with 20,000 pounds thrust engines. Verify the correct software revision is shown. How we access the IDENT page The IDENT page is automatically displayed when the FMC CDU is first powered. Also the IDENT page can be accessed from any other page by pressing the init ref key on the display pref page, press the index prompt then press the IDENT prompt. With the IDENT page displayed, select key 6 right to go to the position initialization or POS init page, which is the next step of our pre-flight. This is the POS init page where you'll provide the FMC with the most accurate position information before your flight. This is usually accomplished by entering the airport identifier and gate position. The database will automatically load the lat long for the airport in gate you enter. Let's set the FMC up for a flight from Houston to DFW. First notice the airport reference line. It is dashed typing the letter Kia then line select 2 left. The gate line is also optional. You can enter the gate to access the precise lat long of your position. Type gate charlie 31 in the scratch pad then line select 3 left. We must fill the blocks in the set IRS position line. The set IRS position line cannot be changed after alignment is complete so line select the most accurate aircraft coordinates from the above listed coordinates into the scratch pad. Then press line select key 4 right to bring the aircraft coordinates from the scratch pad to the set IRS position line. The correct time in the captain's clock should agree with the time set on the CDU screen. Press the next page to go to the POS ref page.
The positions computed by the FMC and each IRS and GPS as installed are displayed. Check these positions against the aircraft coordinates shown on the previous page. If a more accurate position is displayed on the positive page, it can be line selected to the scratch pad and then use the previous page key to move back to the POS init page and line select from the scratch pad to update the set by IRS position on the positive page. With the POS ref page displayed pressing the next page key will take you to the POS shift page. The POS shift page has no useful information at this time. So go ahead and press the next page key. This action moves past page 3 of 3 and returns us to the POS init page, which is page 1 of 3. Next is to load the route of flight, press line select 6 right to access the route pages. When the root page first appears notice the origin appears in the scratch pad. Line select it to one left. To automatically load a company route, you will need to enter the departure airport arrival airport and the route number from the flight plan to the scratch pad and line select two left. Activate by pressing line select key six right and in order to execute, press the execute key. Now all waypoints crossing restrictions and all other data are automatically loaded in the FMC. Check the route pages using the next or previous page keys. If a company route is not available, you'll manually enter the two waypoints on the right and the via routes are airways on the left side of each line. Press the departure or arrival key. Use it after the route is loaded to select the departure runway SID and transition data. Select line select key 1 left for departure information. You can see the list of departures by use of the next and previous page keys. Press the departure or arrival key again. To display the arrival stars press line select key 2 right. This page shows the stars. Transitions to the stars, approaches, transitions to the approach, and run. Runway selection of each item is done through the line selection. Select the route prompt at line select key 6 right to return to the route page. Now look at the route page and check it against your flight plan for accuracy. The route pages show the ATC clearance while the legs pages show the details shown on the flight plan. For a more detailed breakdown of your route, press the legs key, it shows a detailed waypoints list of the route. View all legs pages for this route by use of the next and previous keys. You will see each waypoint is listed along with the course and distance to each point. When looking at the waypoints ensure that they follow a logical sequence and that there is no inaccurate course headings or duplicate waypoints list. In addition ensure that there are no route discontinuities. How to do constraints are shown if they are applicable. Altitude constraint of 3000 alpha indicates that you must be at or above 3000 feet over the waypoint likewise 3000 bravo indicates a requirement to be at or below 3000 feet, while an altitude of 3000 requires you to be at 3000 over this waypoint. The font size of the FMS altitude data is normally small. You can enter different altitude data to any line and it will then display in large font. Pilot entered altitudes display in larger font than FMS altitudes. Notice the extended data prompt at 6 right. If you press line select key 6 right another page appears where you can enter forecast cruise altitude winds. So the FMC can more accurately plan the flight.
If winds aloft are forecast to be 270 at 30 at your cruise altitude enter to 70 thirtieths into the scratch pad and line select one right. Press the lighted execute key to complete this entry. Press the legs prompt at 6 right to return to the legs page. You may notice modified time information after an input of forecast winds. Rotate the mode selector to plan and select a mid-scale on the FI's range selector. With the plan display selected a symbol appears beside the first waypoint and the word step will appear beside line select key 6 right in place of the normal prompt. Each time you press line select key 6 right, the center label will move down the waypoint and that particular waypoint will be centered on the plan display. This way you can step through all the waypoints to verify them visually. You need to provide performance information to the CDU for VNAV operation press line. Select 6 right to go to the perfinit pages. This is the performance initialization or perfinit page. Enter data here to enable the FMS to calculate the efficient vertical profile. Although you access this page from the line 6 right prompt on the root page. You can also access it on the ground by pressing the init ref key. It is logical to fill this page from the bottom to the top. Cost index reflects the cost of fuel compared to other flight operating costs such as, crew costs, maintenance and depreciation, etc. Values that entered here range from 0 to 200. Higher cost index are used for minimum flight time, lower cost index used for lower fuel consumption. Cost index now is 48, enter the cost index value of the scratch pad and line select 5 left. 4 left is the reserve line, as a minimum, enter the fuel needed to fly to your alternate plus required reserve fuel. If the FMC determines that you'll not arrive at your destination with the current amount of fuel, an advisory message will be displayed in the scratch pad. You need to arrive at Dallas with a minimum of 7,500 pounds of fuel on board, enter 7.5 into the scratch pad and line select 4. Zero fuel weight is 90,000 pounds, write it in the scratch pad and line select 3 left. The total fuel on board is automatically displayed at 2 left. This line is a fuel totalizer and is the sum of the fuel gauges. The aircraft gross weight will be calculated and displayed at one left as soon as you enter the zero fuel weight. Notice that a crew CG will also be displayed on that line. You can enter your planned fuel weight on line two left for your reference. This value will display until both packs are operating and the flaps are extended. At this time the plan fuel value blanks. Total fuel on board is automatically displayed to the right of the plan fuel area. The flight is planned at flight level 220. So enter it in a scratch pad and line select one right. If you've entered in origin and destination airport on the route page and have a cost index and the aircraft gross weight on the perf init page, a minimum cost altitude will be computed and displayed adjacent to the cruise altitude. Notice that lines 2, 3 and 4 right contain dashed lines, filling these lines is optional. However, it will help the FMC give you more accurate data. Know that cruise winds at flight level 220 are 270 at 30. So enter the value into the scratch pad and line select 2 right. Then enter the forecast ESA deviation or the forecast temperature at the top of cruise altitude. If available filling a value into line 3 or 4 right will cause the other line to show the equivalent value. The FMC assumes that the number you enter is in Celsius if these values are entered in Fahrenheit. You must enter the value followed by the letter. Letter F enter 0 in the scratch pad and line select 3 right. The transition altitude in line select key 5 right defaults to 18,000 feet, but will change automatically if the departure procedure has a different stored value. 
You should press the Execute key. In the upper right corner of the screen, we see that there's another page to the Perfinit pages. Page 2 is titled Performance Limit. This page shows the minimum and maximum speed limits for climb cruise and descent. The default values are shown in small font. These speeds limit both econ and required time of arrival or RTA. The minimum and maximum speeds can be changed by overriding existing speeds with either air speeds or Mach numbers. Only Buffett protected speed entries are allowed. The Perfinit page has an N1 limits prompt at 6 right. Press 6 right to go to the next logical page. The N1 limit page requires you to enter the temperature at the airfield. This temperature normally derived from ATIS. It is entered to the blocks in line select key 1 left to the right of the slash you must enter the slash before the numeric value if the temperature is in centigrade, no C is required, if the temperature is in Fahrenheit an F is required. When the temperature is entered, the takeoff N1 value is displayed on one right. You can select reduced takeoff power and or reduce climb power by line selection on this page. Now if an assumed temperature is entered to the left of the slash on line 1 left, the reduced takeoff N1 values appear on line 1 right. This is the current method of selecting reduced power. Entry of a Fahrenheit value in the assumed field will cause the outside air temperature to also display in Fahrenheit values. You may notice that climb 1 or climb 2 is auto-selected after your entry of an assumed temperature. This is to ensure that climb power is not higher than takeoff thrust. After this page is completed as desired, press line select key 6 right to access the takeoff ref page. Enter the takeoff flap setting in line 1 left, the N1 takeoff value displays in line 2 left. If reduced power is used red appears directly over the N1 values the CG line allows for climb CG values to be entered by the crew. The V1 VR and V2 lines on the right are optional for the FMS. However, the policy is to enter this data and it will display on the EADI speed tape. If all the previous pages have been satisfactorily completed a preflight complete message is displayed. If any other previous pages have not been completed or have not been executed a preflight status line will be displayed with one or more prompts under it that indicate the line select keys that will take you to the incomplete page or pages or pages. If you see any incomplete page prompts, press them to go back and complete the required page. Congratulations you now finished the FMC pre-flight. Thanks for watching, if you liked this video please select like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell to be notified when a new video is added. Please share it with your colleagues. All comments are welcome.